Hello everyone and welcome back. Before we continue on, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment on my videos as well as hit that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I come up with new videos. Now as you notice, it's very early in the morning and I'm trying to keep my voice down because a funeral is going to happen later on today and for the next 10 days afterwards, so I'm trying to be respectful. First things first, I need you to go ahead and look at this. This is the amount of people that are subscribed to my channel versus the amount of people that are not subscribed to my channel yet. First thing you need to see here is this, which is the not subscribed portion. 91.5% of people on views are not subscribed and 89.5% of people are not subscribed under watch hours. Please hit that notification bell. Please hit that subscribe button because I need the subs. So we're going to try and get through this as quickly as possible because I'm only allowed five videos every 24-hour period, and I really need to get this out. So we're going to get started. This is the contract of the coalition that I typed up. Now I'm going to try and get through this quickly so I can get more information in here. This is the contract of the coalition. This coalition contract is written with guidance from the Labor Code, and it's also written with guidance from the Law on Occupational Safety and Hygiene. Both of those are listed right there. For all intents and purposes, only the English version of this contract is applicable under Vietnamese law. The Vietnamese version of this contract is for reference only. Party B must agree that they live in a communist and socialist society here in Vietnam. As such, any rights and freedoms contrary to a communist party ideology that Party B enjoys previously enjoyed previously in their home country may not apply if it is in contravention to state policies here in Vietnam. Party B must agree to abide by communist and socialist law. Anything deemed to be slander or defamation against Uncle Ho Chi Minh, the Communist Party of Vietnam, the history of Vietnam, or Vietnam as a whole, United Country, will be dealt with strictly in accordance with the laws. This will include, once such a case is made known to Party A through verified sources, it will be investigated to determine validity. If the case is found to be valid, Party A will make a full report to the District Communist Party office. From there, the government will continue the investigation. If the government so requires, Party A will have a meeting in person with the government and the source who lodged a complaint against the accused. Party A will make all reasonable efforts to keep the source anonymous. However, the complaint turns out to be false, if the complaint turns out to be false, that then the source who lodged a complaint will have charges brought against them for slander under Article 155 of criminal laws. So, yeah, don't say anything slanderous, and, you know, because you will get in trouble for it. Accusations like that, you don't want to do that. Moving on. The name of the coalition, full name and position of the person who concludes the contract on the coalition side. That's me. Coalition is Party A, and that's the coalition, and I'm the proprietary director of it. Hans Coalition of English Teachers VN. Full name and position of the person who concludes the contract, which is me, Mr. Han Yun Lee. Han is my surname. Yun Lee is my given name. And in Vietnamese, it's written as An Han Yun Lee. Position, proprietary director of the coalition. That means I have no boss except for the government itself. So I have no boss except for the government. So, yeah, moving on. Here is the website for my YouTube channel, website for my Facebook that's my phone number. Do not message my phone number unless it is for a purpose such as joining the coalition or things of that nature. If you blow up my phone with useless messages, you will be blocked and reported because that's considered harassment through telephone lines. That's my email address. That's the preferred way I want to receive communication as well as sending applications for membership and donations. So remember that, tuxedoshadow at gmail.com. Moving on. This is Member of Coalition Party B, that's you. Full name, date of birth, gender, residence, identity card number, or passport number of the person who concludes a contract on the member's side. Name, date of birth, gender, only male or female, not one of the 3,000 other or 300,000 different genders. That's what's currently available in the United States. Permanent address, passport, where it was issued at, date, first issued date, expires. If you have a TRC card, I need to know that too. When where it was issued at, date first issued, date expires, emergency contact information, that's not optional in case something bad happens to you, we need to be able to call someone. Work permit, if you've previously held a work permit, we need to know that too. This way it makes paperwork a lot easier when we help you look for work if you have not looked for a job yourself. Moving on, phone number, we need to know your phone number as well as your email address so we can go ahead and send you information. And also go ahead and summon you to the office when necessary. Occupational and educational skills with qualifications. This applies to essentially your high school uh, diploma, your college degrees, stuff like that. That's what that is. 
English teacher certificate, TESOL, CELTA, DELTA, stuff like that, work experience. Since you're applying as an English teacher, you know, you are an English teacher and you're applying to a coalition, then you would have to only write down stuff that's specific with teaching English and nothing else. Health conditions, do you wear glasses, high, have high blood pressure, anything like that? We need to go ahead and know so we can go ahead and get that done. Now, Article 3, Hans Coalition of English Teachers, VN, and by extension, other people who are identified in this document will be referred to as Party A. So, and that's you, blank, in this document will be referred to as Party B. Now, if you have a Vietnamese equivalent name, you should put it in right there. If you don't, don't worry about it. Move on. Rights and obligations of both parties. Rights and obligations of members of the coalition, Party B. That's you. A coalition member has the rights to... Work, freely choose a job, workplace, or occupation, participate in basic and advanced occupational training, develop professional skills, suffer no discrimination, force labor and sexual harassment in the workplace, receive a salary commensurate with his or her occupational skills on the basis of an agreement with the employer of Party B, be provided with personal protective equipment, and work in an occupationally safe and healthy environment with or through the employer of Party B, take statutory sick leaves, take annual paid leaves, and receive collective welfare benefits from the employer of Party B. Establish, join a representative organization of employees, occupational associations, and other organizations in accordance with the law. Request and participate in dialogues with the employer of Party B. Receive consultancy at the workplace to protect his or her legitimate rights and interests. Participate in management activities from the employer of Party B that are legally allowed according to the regulations of the Ministry of Labor, War, Invalids, and Social Affairs, MOLISA of Vietnam. Moving on. Refuse to work if he or she finds that the work given by the employer of Party B directly threatens his or her life or health. Unilaterally terminate the employment contract between Party B and the employer of Party B. Exercise other rights as prescribed by law. Moving on. A coalition member has the obligations to Party B, that's you, shall provide Party A, which is me, as well as the employer of Party B with truthful information about his or her full name, date of birth, gender, residence, educational level, occupational skills and qualifications, health conditions, and other issues directly related to the conclusion of the employment contract as required under this coalition contract by Party A and or if by the or, and or by the employer of Party B if so requested. This means you must provide us with the information, but if the, your employer doesn't ask you certain pieces of information, you don't have to disclose it. Moving on. Implementing the contract of Party A, implementing the employment contract between Party A and B, and or implementing the contract between Party B and the employer of Party B, collective bargaining agreement, and other lawful agreements. Yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Obey internal labor regulations, lawful management, administration, and supervision by Party A. Obey internal labor regulations, the lawful management, administration, and supervision by the employer of Party B. What this means is that nobody will post the internal labor regulations as they are required to do so under Article 118 of the Labor Code, if I remember correctly. So the law states that you must go ahead and post the major contents in a conspicuous area where everybody can see it, but no English center that I know of has ever done that. So you must treat the employment contract you get from your employer as well as this contract both as – the internal labor regulations because it's your contract. It says everything about it, what you can, can't do, everything like that. Moving on. We do not have a lot of time. That's why I am going through this as quickly as I possibly can. So we have this article, uh, letter C right here. Implement regulations of laws on labor, employments, vocational, education, social insurance, health insurance, unemployment insurance, occupational safety, and health. This means you are required to learn the labor laws. You have to implement regulations of laws on labor. That's the reason why I enforce that in my, in my coalition. You must learn your rights so you can go ahead and argue correctly. Rights and obligations of the coalition, that's me. The coalition has the rights to recruit, arrange, manage, and supervise all coalition members, give commendation, and take action against violations of internal labor regulations. Establish, join, and operate in employer representative organizations, occupational associations, and other organizations in accordance with the law. Discuss with the representative of the employer of Party B about issues related to labor relations and improvement of the material and spiritual lives of employees. We will get into that later on. Moving on, we do not have a lot of time. Exercise of the rights as prescribed by law. Moving on, the coalition has the obligations to 
The coalition shall provide Party B with truthful information about the job, workplace, working conditions, working hours, rest periods, occupational safety and health, wage, forms of wage payment, social insurance, health insurance, unemployment insurance, regulations on business secret, technological know-how, and other issues directly related to the conclusion of the employment contract if so requested by Party B. This is only in effect if we help you find a job. If you go ahead and look for your own job and you get one, that's great. But we will, if we find a job, we will provide you with all this information so you can make an informed decision. Moving on. Again, we do not have a lot of time. Pause to read. Implement the contract of the coalition, collective bargaining agreement, and other lawful agreements with Party B. Respect the honor and dignity of Party B. And unless an official statement is issued by the proprietary director himself, all other statements by all other members or non-members are null and void. This means that we will stick with and agree to the coalition contract that we sign with you. And we will respect your honor and dignity. Now, moving on. Again, we do not have a lot of time. Have dialogue with Party B when the need arises. Implement regulations of laws on labor. That means we must enforce the labor code. That's the reason why I studied it as well as I do. Because I know the labor code inside and out like the back of my hand. Employments, vocational education, social health, unemployment insurance, occupational safety and health, develop and implement solutions against sexual harassment in the workplace. That one is pretty self-explanatory. See, the coalition does not the coalition does not issue or offer social health unemployment insurance, but we do know that your employer should, and we can tell you exactly how to go ahead and go about getting that. Participate in development of the national occupational standards, assessment and recognition of Party B's professional skills. Article 5. Again, we do not have a lot of time. I'm trying to read through this as quickly as possible. The funeral is going to happen either today or tomorrow. There's going to be a lot of noise for the next 10 days because of culture and tradition, and I do agree with that, and I do accept with that. That's the reason why I'm trying to get these videos done before the funeral happens because I will not be able to record during that period out of respect for the deceased. So the job and workplace of Party B, job, English teacher, task 1. Teaching in accordance with the objectives, contents, educational programs, and teaching plans. Attend class fully and on time. Manage students in activities organized by the employer of Party B. Participate in the professional activities from the employer of Party B that are legally allowed according to the regulations of the Ministry of Labor, War, Invalids, and Social Affairs, Molisa of Vietnam. Task 2. Implement the decisions of Party A subject to the inspection of Party A and educational management levels of the employer of Party B. Comply with the rules of both Party A and the employer of Party B. This means that if we tell you to do something, you must do it. Now, we will also inspect you as well. We will inspect you, and then the educational management levels of your employer will also inspect you during the course of your employment to make sure that everything is going smoothly and properly. Moving on. Implement the regulation on teacher ethics according to the regulations of the Ministry of Education and Training. There is a separate law from 2008 that I still have. I will also make that required reading for all of my coalition members. You must teach according to Communist Party doctrine. That's what's in there. Workplace A, working online at the home of Party B. Workplace B, working at all school locations currently assigned to Party B by the employer of Party B, which will include both in-person and online work. This will depend on circumstances and social distancing restrictions that either may or may not be currently in place. The employer of Party B is obligated under the labor laws to provide Party B with a safe and hygienic working environment under Workplace B. Party B is only responsible for the safety and the hygiene of Workplace A. Moving on. During the school year, Party B will mostly, mostly work at Workplace B. If an epidemic is declared by competent authorities, Party B will be working at Workplace A. Through Party A, the employer of Party B will make all, every reasonable effort to assign online classes to Party B. This will ensure that Party B works all school year long. If, however, there are no online classes or in-person classes available during major epidemics and or during the summer months, then at that time Party B may seek temporary alternative employment aside from the current employer of Party B. When the next school year arrives, Party B may at that time conclude a new employment contract with their current employer or seek alternative employment elsewhere. Moving on. Again, that's pretty self-explanatory. Duration of the employment con the coalition contract provided by Party A to Party B. Duration, permanent and indefinite, beginning on day, month, year. That's how they do it here in Vietnam. Provisional clause. From the date this contract is signed, Party B will be under the management of Party A. If at any time Party B wishes to leave Party A, they'll be allowed to do so with no problems. This, of course, is provided that all fees from Party A that are payable by Party B are current and paid in full. However, if, however, outstanding legal fees are owed to Party A by Party B and Party B refuses to pay, then Party A will seek legal action against Party B to recover lost funds. I know it may be only 2.3 million dong a month, but to me it means a lot. That's the reason why I'm willing to go ahead and sue to recover that amount. 
fees and schedule for payment of fees. We have about 10 minutes left. Let's see how far we can go. Fee payment method. Bank transfer is required unless Party B can prove that Party B does not have bank account access. If Party B does not have bank account access, then and only then will payment be accepted in cash. Reason being is because handling cash is extremely unhygienic. Not only that, receiving bank transfer is a lot more convenient for me. That's the reason why that is. Coalition membership fee will be exactly 2,300,000 Vietnam Dong or 100 USD depending on the convenience of Party B. This fee will be paid by Party B after Party B receives an employment offer with a contract assigned through Party A. That's if we look for a job for you. However, if Party B currently has a job or found a job on your own, essentially, then you will pay immediately from the, con from the date this contract is signed. So essentially, yeah, if you have a job, you found a job yourself, you're gainfully employed already, you're already drawing salary, stuff like that, then you must pay immediately $2.3 million dong on the day you sign the contract. Party B will only pay this fee once a month, every month that Party B continues to use Party A services. This fee will be divided by Party A in the following ways. 35%, 805,000 dong or 35 USD will be deducted to pay taxes and a strict tax record will be kept by Party A for tax reporting purposes. Moving on, again, we do not have a lot of time, and I'm trying to go through this as quickly as possible. The 65%, 1,495,000 Vietnam Dong, or 65 USD, that is left over will be divided in half. 747,000 VND, or 3250, will go to the proprietary director of Party A, which is me, for personal expenses that are not business expenses in nature. The other half, 747,000 Vietnam Dong, or 3250 USD, will go to the Legal Defense Fund of Party A. This Legal Defense Fund will be seen by all members of Party A for transparency via Google Drive in a shared file. When the fund is in use, it will be noted as to who needed legal funds, what date they needed it, how much the legal fees were, and why it was used. Only the proprietary director of Party A will decide when the legal defense fund will be used, how the legal defense fund will be used, as well as having sole access to the legal defense fund. This is to ensure that Party A has enough funding to pay an actual labor lawyer in the event that they are needed for Party B. It will also be known that Party B cannot demand from Party A a refund of fees that Party B has paid. Why is because of the fact that said fees are not refundable at all for any reason. If Party B attempts outside legal action or coercive action to recover said funds, then Party B a, which is me, I reserve the right to legally defend themselves through law and order. This means the fees are not refundable at any time for any reason. You're essentially buying corrupted center insurance. You, you can't ask for money back from your insurance company. Moving on, Article 8. We got about seven minutes left. Allowances and other additional payments. Party A will make every reasonable effort to ensure that Party B is paid a minimum wage of 450000 dong, which is 1935 U.S. for one hour of work, which will equal roughly about – 2,000 USD a month at about 100 hours. However, Party B must understand that some employers will not pay that much. We will try, but we cannot guarantee it. So we will make every reasonable effort. If the salary offer is ridiculously too low, Party A reserves the right to make fun of said employer later on while putting said employer on a blacklist and not contact again. Party A will also advise Party B to move to different cities where their talents will be appreciated. Party A will make every reasonable effort to ensure Party B receives enough hours to have a decent monthly salary. Party A cannot guarantee hours at any time because of the fickle nature of English centers, their parent and subsidiary companies. At any point before, during, and or after this contract is concluded and or terminated, Party A is not liable to pay any expenses aside from what is precisely described in this contract for Party B at any time for any reason. Party A, again, that's me. I am not liable to pay any expenses aside from what is precisely described in this contract for Party B at any time for any reason. I hope you paid attention to that. Six minutes left. Labor mediation, labor education, and or lawsuits in open court. If Party B has a legitimate need for the de legal defense fund due to issues from the current employer, Party A will use the legal defense fund at that time to consult for one meeting only with a labor lawyer to consult with Party B about what legal options may exist to peacefully resolve the issue. If this is unsuccessful, then Party B may at that time hire said lawyer by Party B on the behalf of Party B to file a labor mediation, labor education case through the Department of Labor. If the labor mediation, labor education case fails because the employer is refusing to comply with the judgments issued, then Party B may at that time direct direct the lawyer to file a lawsuit on behalf of Party B to the courts. Party B will compensate this lawyer at their own expense as required after the initial consultation meeting, which is what we pay for. Party B should be aware that some court cases can take a very long time to settle. Party A shall provide Party B with any and all helpful documents to assist in their case. Moving on, we do not have a lot of time. Provisional clause. 
Party A will only assist Party B with the legal defense fund if it can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt that Party B did not cause problems or break the laws in any way. This means that if Party B is fired from the job, it is Party B's fault and it can be proven with certainty by the employer of Party B. Then Party B will be removed from the services of Party A and denied access to the legal defense fund. Furthermore, Party A will not assist Party B in any way or form if said previously mentioned circumstances under this provision occurs and the employer wishes to take any type of legal action against Party B. Party A reserves the right to assist the employer of Party B with free help concerning Party B, but only if the circumstances are proven to be the fault of Party B. However, under this provision, Party A will define the following. If Party B loses their job and is proven to not be their fault, Party B will be allowed to remain with Party A for free until either Party B finds a job themselves within 30 days or Party A makes every reasonable effort to locate a job for Party B within 60 days. You have only these two options. You either look for a job yourself or you have me look for a job for you. Now, I encourage you to look for your job for yourself, but if you absolutely can't, then I will assist you in that matter. But I really want you to get your own job because of the fact you need to be up and working again. You can't wait for two months. You can't wait for two months. If a new job has been located, then Party B will pay fees to Party A after the receipt of their first salary. So once you get your new job, you pay me after you get your first salary. Party B is required to inform Party A when new employment has been secured. If, however, Party B cannot get a new job or fails to inform Party A of the new job that Party B received within 30 days of the employment contract termination, or Party A cannot locate a job for Party B within 60 days from the date of the employment contract termination, Party B will be released from said services from party of Party A with no appeal being possible. That means you're unemployable. If we can't get you a job because you messed up too much, then we, we're just going to let you go because we can't have people that, that aren't employable. Moving on, settlement of labor mediation, settlement of labor education, and or lawsuit settlement payments to Party B. Now, Party A, which is me, will never require Party B, which is you, to pay Party A, which is me, any percentage of their settlements from the legal cases that Party B has won. However, if Party B chooses to contribute anyways, then Party A will graciously accept it and apply it the same way the fees from Party A are distributed once received, 32.5. Balloon payments and prepayments are treated the same way. Moving on. Personal income tax. The salary received by Party B, which is payable by the employer of Party B, is net salary. Party B receives this net salary on the salary day designated by the employer of Party B each month of the Gregorian calendar. The employer of Party B has already deducted the necessary taxes from the salary of Party B before Party B receives a monthly salary payment. The employer of Party B is solely responsible for all tax preparation and tax payments on behalf of Party B. Party B is completely absolved of any wrongdoing by the employer of Party B if the taxes of Party B are either not prepared and or not filed properly. The employer of Party B doesn't receive a payment invoice from the tax office proving payment of personal income tax or some combination of these issues. If Party B qualifies, Party B can request the red tax invoice. If Party B files taxes on their own behalf, they are solely responsible for any and all consequences arising from said actions. Party A, which is me, is completely absolved of any and all liability arising in this matter. Taxes are your problem, not ours. Moving on, page 15, regimes for promotion and pay rise. Party A reserves the right to promote Party B to permanent staff of Party A if Party B has demonstrated exceptional and exemplary skills, not only in teaching but also in business. Permanent staff of Party A will no longer teach but will be paid to observe other teachers that are a part of Party A and report on what they see and hear to Party A. Permanent staff will essentially be shift managers for Party A so that the rules of Party A are enforced uniformly everywhere that Party A has a presence. Party A will follow all statutory laws according to the Vietnamese labor law, the labor code and other applicable laws. The other benefit is that if Party B or another teacher of Party A has problems with their school or English center for whatever reason, they can tell the permanent staff. The permanent staff will then inform Party A of the issue and Party A in turn will inform the employer of Party B of the issue. A pay rise will only be considered for permanent staff when there are appropriate funds to cover it. After tax payments, the legal defense fund payments, and personal expenses, the proprietary director of Party A have been paid. So after all that stuff's been paid, if there's any money left over, yeah, we'll talk about a raise. Not an issue. Moving on. Article 10. We're really trying to get through this as quickly as possible. Article 10 from the 2015 Law on Occupational Safety and Hygiene. Personal protective equipment for the employee under Article 6, Clause 1, Subclause C, Article 6, Clause 2, Subclause C, Article 16, Clause 3, Article 17, Clause 2, Article 22, Clause 3, Article 23, Article 76, Clause 3, Subclause C. The employer of Party B is required to pay for and to provide personal protective equipment, PPE, for the use of Party B while in, while in the performance of the job for the employer of Party B. 
the personal protective equipment includes but is not limited to high quality face masks and high quality hand sanitizers as that's what English teachers need as PPE in order to do their job properly of which may have various types compositions and ingredients the employer of party B is not allowed to charge party B monetarily or otherwise for this in any way this is also considered to be a part of employment expenses which is stated under article 11 clause 2 of the 2019 labor code of Vietnam got about 30 seconds left COVID-19, to prevent the transmission of COVID-19 or any other dangerous airborne infectious diseases, Party B agrees to wear a disposable face mask at all times while on school campus, English Center property, and during the performance of the job for the employer of Party B. Party B will refuse to remove the mask while on school campus, English Center property, and or during the performance of the job for the employer of Party B. The only exception to this is either to drink water or eat food. Party B agrees to keep a two-meter distance from other people when taking their mask off to eat or drink water. Party B also agrees to use hand sanitizer when needed. Moving on. If Party B suspects that Party B may have COVID-19 or any other dangerous airborne infectious diseases, then Party B agrees to stop work immediately to seek treatment and to inform the employer of Party B as well as Party A at once. Party B will be allowed to return to work by the employer of Party B and Party A with a negative test result. Party B will also inform the employer of Party B as well as Party A at once if Party B suspects that other students or employees have COVID-19 or any other dangerous airborne infectious diseases. Party A will inform the employer of Party B about this and ask the employer of Party B to take actions against students or employees suspected of COVID-19 or any other dangerous airborne infectious diseases. Moving on, if Party B is caught not wearing a mask even though it's required by this contract by either the employer of Party B or by Party A, Party B will be warned by Party A. If caught twice not wearing a mask, Party B will be required at the end of that school day that day to attend a class taught by Party A on how to wear a face mask properly while on school campus and or English Center property. If caught a third time not wearing a mask, Party B will have to sign a separate paper acknowledging that if they get caught not wearing a mask for a fourth time, they will be separated from Party A and denied access to the Legal Defense Fund provisional clause. I'm going to stop the video here because I already know that I'm going to run out of time, so I'm going to have to go ahead and stop it right here. Provisional clause vaccine is what I'm going to go ahead and get on next. Um, I have to go ahead and stop this video now so I can go ahead and do what I need to do. Um, again, I'm going to go ahead and show people this. I have a 91.5% not subscribe rate under views, 81.5% not subscribe rate under watch hours, so please hit that subscription. Hit that notification bell. If you want to donate Donate to tuxedo shadow at gmail.com. Subject line, I want to donate. If you want to join the coalition, send me an email, tuxedo shadow at gmail.com. Subject line, membership. I will go ahead and give you instructions on how to do either one. Now, I have to go ahead and cut this video short so I can try and go ahead and get it and get this done because I already hear things are starting to ramp up downstairs. So have a good night. Be safe. I'll see you again soon.